Red light, green light, one, two, three. Let's do this. Which one am I focusing on? So my name is Samuel Acosta. I was born and raised in Coney Island. I'm 26 years old. And I have a huge family in Coney Island. Um, number seven from my dad's side and only child from my mom's side. I was supposed to be born with defects. Um, I, my parents told, my parents was told by the doctors that I was supposed to be born with no legs and no arms and heart conditions. Thank God, through lots of prayers and lots of doctor visits, I was born healthy, a healthy baby that was always told since the get-go that you have a purpose. As years went by, teenage years, I wasn't all that great, but also it wasn't that, that um, I wasn't horrible either. I had good grades in school. I was a genuine um, person, but I also had a flip side, and it, a flip side that would take me to visit the streets of what my, my dad would try so hard to keep me away from. So I got to visit the street side of things, and I got to see a lot of things that normally I wouldn't see because I was always so sheltered in. I always knew of God, so I don't want to. I don't want to say that. I didn't know of God. I always knew of God. I was in a in a Catholic uh, base home, and then we became Christians as as time went by. But I always would go in and out, kind of like lukewarm. I knew of God, just didn't know Him. Um, go to church, sometimes um, not want to go to church. I I kind of bounced around from not knowing if it was Catholic or Christians, like that whole type of thing with religion. And um, I will, I will, I will pray or I'll talk to. I always knew that God. I I always knew of God. I just never had that relationship that I wish I had. I was an intern in high school, good grades, um, pretty boy, <laughs> and just like every high schooler, you know, you you're in it for the i the ideal is finish high school, go to college, and you know you'll have a job. The only thing is with me, my ideal of becoming a police officer, a, fire, a firefighter, or any of the things that people will usually paint the picture of, I didn't want to do none of that. I wanted to become a professional wrestler. And when everyone used to tell me, hey, what do you want to be when you grow up? A professional wrestler. I finished high school. I went to college. I got my degree. And I just felt I'm empty, you know, like, what, what's next? I started working at a, a security company that pretty much molded me to the person I became today. And through that, I got to see all parts of the five boroughs, um, the, the highs, the lows, the in and outs, the ugly, the pretty, the bad, the beautiful. And my mom was super sick. So knowing that my mom is the, the believer of the, of the household, uh, I, just, I just felt like, like what, why is God doing what he's doing with my mom when my mom is like super sick, super ill. Um, she was practically almost in her deathbed and a lot of people didn't know her because she had, I mean, a lot of people do know her, but a lot of people didn't know that she was in pain like that. And I used to wake up and go to, uh, to work 16 hours a day, 20 hours a day. And I felt like a horrible son because uh, I was going to work for so many hours and knowing that my mom was like practically dying on me, you know? And it made me question faith because it was just like, oh, my mom is such a, a beautiful soul, and what's going on, you know? Why, why is she going through the stuff that she's going through? And it just makes you question things. So I kind of just started living through my own will. And I, as time went by, I was in all parts of the five boroughs at six in the morning, four in the morning. And you know how New York is pretty, a little um, wild at, at times. I saw, a gun pulled up on me, I saw drugs, I witnessed uh, robberies, near-death experiences, and I always felt like God was with me. It's weird, right? Because I was in and out. I was never really all the way in, I was never really all the way out. So I joined the professional wrestling school, and four years of training and two years as a professional wrestler, I beat my body to the point where... Um, I suffered brain injury along the way. So as becoming a, uh, like leading into becoming a professional wrestler, 
I was training, going to work, 20 hour shifts, um, take care of my parents, make sure that my mom is okay. Time went by, my body wasn't the same anymore. So being that my body's not the same, professional wrestling, um, which I used to go by a name, um, Osito, the last uh, fighting bear that would later go on to the culture bear. I know my story is all over the place, but I'm trying to like gather my thoughts and I'm thinking, um, like God made all this happen. And even though I thought professional wrestling was my purpose, I, it made me realize that professional wrestling wasn't my purpose. Cause through blessings, you can also get blessings that isn't from God, you know? And I, w I had this rock star life where I was wrestling so much and I bumped into someone in the, in, in the local independent scene that was giving out uh, a pain medication that I got addicted to as time went by. And thinking that professional wrestling was gonna be my fulfillment because I was infatuated with professional wrestling. I loved professional wrestling, everything about it, the arts, the, the violence behind it, the character, the psychology. I realized that as time went by, to continue, I had to put like stuff into my body like um, Percocets. Um, I was drinking, smoking, try to just to continue the the system of your you know keep your body flowing. So I was living this rock star life, and I obtained three titles, thinking that it would make me feel complete. Everything that I was doing with wrestling, it, when I had the mask on, I felt complete. When I had the mask off, you know, I just felt lost, I, lo I felt abandoned. And for about, I would say about 10 years of my life, I would only hear the name Osito. And I, would, I, I lost the, I actually didn't even know my, who I was. I had like an identity issue at one point. I was behind the mask so much that I actually felt like I was Osito. I became jealous of the character. I became jealous of who I created, but it wasn't who God created. And along the way, um, I, I felt like distant, you know, distant from the world. I, I was like questioning like, why is, you know, everything was happening so fast. In two years, I became a, a three-time champion. I stepped in the ring with legends of the past. I, I stepped in the ring with the future, the present. And everyone was telling me, like, you're going to go on to something bigger and better. But along the way, I suffered uh, injuries. Um, and the main one was a, a brain injury that multitude of concussions. And we, in wrestling, we had this thing called the bump card. And my bump card expired, meaning I took so much impact to where uh, my vision was going to the side. And I was bleeding through my nose and bleeding through my mouth. And I just felt like, like, wow, like I'm being ripped away from everything that I pretty much obtained, not realizing that God replaces and he removes. I mean, re he removed, yeah, he, re he replaces, he removes. But before all of that, um, before the injuries, um, something, something came about. I was in the rock star life and I was becoming a person that I thought I was. I really was, I was just trying to fit in. But by fitting in, I realized that this isn't me. I was going out, you know, clubbing, going out to parties, feeling super alone, accomplishing everything I, I could accomplish in the professional wrestling scene. I was representing the culture. I was representing Coney Island. Like I said, I was never really addicted to drugs, but to continue, I had so much pain in my body. I thought that was the only way. And I, I felt lonely and I felt disconnected. I felt isolated from the world only up until I put the mask on. Once I put, put the mask on, I felt connected to the culture. I felt connected to the world. Um, then one day I was, it, the scenery was very, very clear to me, but I was, you know, partying and I see fire around and it wore off. What I was on wore off and I looked around and I, remember speaking out to God and I told God, I spoke to God and said, God, this isn't me. I don't know what's going on, but this isn't me. Um, 
I, I like, I need you and anybody that you send me next, ironically, um, send me, send me a, <laughs> send me a girl who, who loves God first and I'll wife her, like marry her. Weird, because um, I wouldn't think that that would get me closer to God, but God answered my prayer. And God been answering my prayers. My mom healed up. In wrestling, I was very, very successful. Those were my prayers that was I was praying to God about. Family, healthy. But there was always a, a lonely feeling. And um, uh, the girl that I'm with now, she's my wife, but I met her at the gym, local gym that me and her will always go to. And she came up to me and she was like, hey, you believe in God? Just like that, simple and direct. I ended up going to church because I was like, you know what? I give up. Like on that Saturday, I give up. I'm going to check out. I'm going to check out this church. Check it out. I need a new home. I went and when I went, I felt like the enemy was pulling me away. Hey, don't go to church. What do you need a church for? Like, I, like you have everything you want. You're, you're. You're known. You have recognize. You have recognition. Um, you don't need God. And then the other side was me. Like, don't listen to the voices. Go to, go check it out. Be open minded. That day, everything that was the worship music, everything that was being saying, I felt connected to it, and I just like I broke down, and then I I realized like. Like uh, there, like I need, I need, uh, I need more of this. I didn't say I needed God, but I said I needed more of this. As time went by, I realized I needed God, and as God came into my life, like I accepted Him completely. I realized uh, on October twenty ninth, twenty twenty three, a part of me died, and a new part of me rose. So, the character Osito. I had to leave him behind, and Samuel Rose. My my story is basically a story of trials and tribulations, always being beat with the idea that you have a purpose. Not really beat, but always being mentioned that you have a purpose, and not realizing that my purpose may be, or possibly be, the fact that the same place that I used to represent in the pro professional wrestling scene is who I'm speaking to now. So I, I can't gather my thoughts up because I feel like God is still working in me. But I got baptized. I, uh, when I got baptized, I left everything behind. And realizing that this is not of my own will anymore, this is through the will of God, I am no longer in control of what I want to do, but God is in control of what He wants me to do. And God rescued me. He saved me from so many different things, from the, from the street life to working in the streets to getting me out of things to showing me a sneak peek of what hard work can do. But this isn't the work that I want you to do, you know. So I always did everything with my heart on my sleeve. Love is contagious. Hate is a virus. I'm for the people, of the people the people's champion, but now I'm God's soldier of Christ. You know, I'm here to just give my life up to him because he did so much for me and he took me out of a, of a mindset that wasn't supposed to be my mindset. And I always knew of God because right before my wrestling matches, I used to always pray to God. I used to always thank him. Thank you, God, for um, protecting me and guiding me and putting a shield of armor upon me and my friends. And I don't say anything bad about professional wrestling. Just for me, I, my time was up. I, I don't know what the future is in store, but I do believe that when, you're, when you have God in your life, you feel complete. When I thought I was complete and I had everything I thought I wanted and needed, I realized that I was the most empty as I ever was. And when God takes you out of something, he removes people, he removes um, bonds, but he replaces it with, like before I was, uh, I was lonely. I, 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 I felt like I had everybody, but I was actually very, very lonely. And God gave me life. 
And on top of that, he gave me a beautiful wife that loves God and she's pushing me more and more to him. And I give a lot of credit to my family, my friends, my wife. Um, shout out to Graffiti Ministries and, and Pastor Stephen, his son. And for the, um, I believe that if you have planted, you know, allowed, allow change, because when God does miracles in your life, you have to allow yourself to, you can't be doing the same thing that you used to do before. You just can't. 